Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at how we would write a complex number in modulus argument form so we can answer questions from exercise 2c. So we've seen one way that we can write complex numbers and that's the basic z equals x plus y i, the real part add the imaginary part times i. But there's another way that you can write complex numbers as well. As long as you know the modulus and the argument of the complex number, then you can write it. Uh, you can write out the complex number. And the bit that you have to remember is that complex numbers can also be written like this: z equals r. Now r is representing the modulus times by brackets cos theta, where theta is the argument, plus i sine theta where theta is the argument once again. So one way of writing complex numbers is x plus yi. Another way of writing complex numbers is the modulus times by cos of the argument plus i sine of the argument. Now why you would write a complex number like this, it looks 10 times more complicated, will be seen later. It's a lot more easier to do powers of complex numbers and, uh, and other funky things to do with complex numbers when it's in this form rather than this form. Uh, so you just have to delay seeing why this is a useful form to be in. So let's see where this comes from as well. R is the modulus, theta is the argument. So if we take any complex number, let's take the complex number up here, it could be any complex number, and let's just remind ourselves of what the modulus is. The modulus is the distance between our complex number and the origin and theta is the angle of rotation from the real axis, either positively or negatively. Okay, so that's to say that if you know the distance and the angle of rotation round from the real axis, you can exactly locate the point of your complex number. R is the distance away, and theta is just your rotation around. There's this heavily links in with polar coordinates that we'll also see later in further maths. So, how do we work out what value the x-axis gives us and what value the y-axis gives us? Well, just from taking a little bit of GCSE trigonometry and the SO, the sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, we get that the opposite value, this axis here, the y-axis, is equal to the hypotenuse R times by sine of theta, which is the argument. So r sine theta, this is what y is equal to. And exactly the same for the cos angle here, so adjacent equals hypotenuse times cos theta, which would be the hypotenuse of r times by cos of the argument theta. And this effectively here gives you the x-axis. So given that any complex number can be written as x, or r cos theta, plus yi, or r sine theta i, we can write out that the complex number z can also be equal to r cos theta, because x and r cos theta are exactly the same thing, plus i r sine theta, or i y, because y is exactly equal to r sine theta. And then just factorise out the r to get it in its final form. And we've got here that z equals r brackets cos theta plus i sine theta, where r is your modulus and theta is your argument. So we can write any complex number in either form. There's not one way that works for a specific complex number. All complex numbers can be written in both forms. All right, let's have a go at writing this number here in modulus argument form. Well, the two things that we really need to do is to work out the modulus, work out the argument, and then write our final answer as we've worked it out previously. Okay, so the first one here is 1 across and root 3 up. So working out the modulus first, this is our second question. Working out the modulus first, it's 1 squared plus root 3 squared, which gives us 2. The argument for z1 is tan minus 1 of imaginary part over real part, so that gives us pi over 3. 
So now that we know the modulus and now that we know the argument, all we need to do is just now replace this value as r and this value as theta into what we've got up here. So here, z is going to equal 2 brackets cos of theta over 3, so uh, pi over 3, plus i sine pi over 3, close brackets. And that's your final answer. That is the complex number z1 written in arguments modulus form or modulus argument form. 2 being the modulus on the front, theta is replaced by pi over 3, which is the argument. All right, so the next one is uh, find the modulus argument form of minus 3 minus 3i. So all we need to do for that is look at the distance from the origin to the complex number. That's our modulus, root 18, or 3 root 2. The argument for this complex number here is worked out in a very difficult way. First, we need to do tan minus 1 of 3 over 3 to get the inside angle on this triangle here. But then we need to do the negative of pi minus this angle because it's on the bottom and because we need to measure it from the real positive axis. So we actually want minus 3 pi over 4. And then all that's left for us to do is to write it in modulus argument form. So replace the r with 3 root 2 and replace the theta with minus 3 pi over 4. And that's our final answer to this question here then. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two here. The first one here is turning a complex number into modulus argument form. And this one here is going back from modulus argument form back into x plus y i form. So pause the video and have a go at these questions here. All right then, so let's have a go at the first one here then. Draw out a little diagram so you can see what's going on here. We've got 2 plus 2i in this position here. We've got 2 going across and 2 up. So the first piece of information we need to know is what r is. Now r is equal to 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to 2 root 2. And the argument of z, or in other words, theta, is going to equal tan minus 1 of 2 over 2, which is equal to pi by 4. So now we know what r is, now we know what theta is, all that we have to do now is just write it in argument modulus form. So it goes 2 root 2, bracket, cos pi by 4, plus i sine pi by 4. And it's as easy as that. Just to make sure you remember the form that it looks like and, and how you substitute in the modulus and the argument and you're there. The difficult part is working out the modulus and the argument, not putting it in argument modulus form because that's just remembering it. Okay, question 3b here is slightly more difficult, but really it's not. All you have to do is work backwards from the argument modulus form back to x plus yi. Now what happens if we expand the brackets here? We get half cos pi by 6 there plus i half times sine pi by 6. So really it's this part here that's the real part and it's this part here that's the imaginary part. So all you have to do really is grab your calculator and type in a half times cos of pi by 6 and you get, well, cos pi by 6 is 3 pi by 2 times a half, which will give us 3, uh, so root 3 over 4, uh, plus sine pi by 6 times by a half, which will give you well, sine pi by 6 is a half times another half, which will give you a quarter, and then you just need to bung the i on the end. So effectively, this part here is your x value, this part here is your y value, and this here is your final answer. Root 3 over 4 
plus a quarter i. All right then, so pause the video and have a go at questions, lots of questions from exercise 2c. Make sure you do a lot of them. Um, a lot of complex numbers is going to be for you um, being very confident with knowing um, the form of uh, argument modulus form and using it and manipulating it later on. So make sure you're really comfortable with this transformation between the argument modulus form and the Cartesian form. Right, thanks very much for watching this video and uh, practice plenty of questions.